This is Charlie Kao with Travel Mall in Colombo, Sri Lanka, with uh, Chairman Paddy Witana. And he's chairman of the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau and Sri Lankan Tourism Development Agency. That's right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. As I told you, I just this is my 18th day visiting your lovely country. I can add that word lovely because I just spent 18 days, nine, 10 uh, hotel stops and untold number of cities. And uh, I can see the booming tourism development post-conflict uh, or some people call the war. Uh, what's ahead for Sri Lanka? How are you gonna manage this, this growth? You just said that 18 days you travel the length and the width of the country. That's what we need. This country we had a problem for 30 years. It was a confined to the south of Sri Lanka, but there were the arrivals, but there were the movement of people. Today it had taken off that country are open up. Opened everybody to travel length. That's what we need in tourism. For me, tourism is benefits to the people, the community. If we don't travel, there won't benefit to the people. So what I'm always a per person who like to promote the visitors to come to Sri Lanka and have interaction with the people. They have the experience of this country doing that and the community get the benefit from the tourism. So on that way, you have quite rightly said it's a lovely, it's a beautiful country. You travel with 18 year days looking for various hotels. This is possible because there's peace and safety in the country. And that's going to be the, our future. We are looking at how we promote Sri Lanka. You know, it's a pretty compact country. It diversified. Its authenticity is the memories of the people. We can take it. So when you talk about those things, obviously it's a small country. The island, the 1,200 miles or kilometers of beach. We're talking about all those eight heritage sites. We're talking about the wildlife. We're talking about this the, the waterfalls, plantation, Mazagon, all of that. These are all nature. These belong to the mankind. These were the people. And that is what you are selling for tourism and that is our responsibility to see that these are protected, taken care for the future. So Sri Lanka is a tourism that is not man-made tourism. It is built on the nature below the 2,500 years of history. Yeah. We talk about whatever we have. It is, is belongs to mankind, it is that is be preserved and work on them. So we can talk, we are proud of this country, we can talk about all those things. We are talking about various and whole country where we can. For me today, tourism can come. People, more visitors can come. There is enough for them to enjoy, enough places to visit in the, uh, this country. So that, I don't think we must restrict tourism or visitor to this country. We can open up. But everybody can go every corner and every place you can enjoy tourism. There's something to offer. The number one is our people. That, with that smile, you can't be, from the time you come from the airport entrance, with a smile you continue, that touch point. Every touch point we talk about is, is unique in this country. That's what you're looking for tourism. That's what you will be giving our visitors that, to come here. We, everything, everybody will have these beaches, everybody have wildlife, where people, other countries could offer. But what we offer is unique within a few hours of your journey, a few hours of your day, a few, a few hours or a few hours of holiday, you can enjoy visit everything. You talk about whatever we give, areas we have. We talk about the, yes. You started talking uh, about most people to date, have visited uh, the Colombo Gale area for the beach, for the wildlife, in Yala. Mm. Yeah. They have um, uh, uh, gone to the cultural uh, yeah. area yeah. and, and Triangle, yeah. yeah, candy and so forth. Maybe the hills. So, what I heard you say is that those places are growing just fine. A uh, lot of uh, development going on in terms of hotels, infrastructure, but those other parts further north, you know, further east, you'd like to see those being impacted more positive, more revenue from tourism uh, going there. So what, 
What plans are there to we have achieve plans. that? If you take the country where the conflict, we had the north and the east. That's where the area we had the conflict. For example, few months back I had the UNWTA the international seminar, tourism, tourism for uh, peace and reconciliation in the East Coast. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I got the uh, Director General. Refi. Yeah, Refi. Mm -hmm. uh, Secretary General. I, when I met him a year, two years, a year back in Maldives, I spoke to him. I said, I want this in Sri Lanka. I said, not in Colombo. I want to have it in the East Coast. But it, it, it's not easy, the logistics. It's not easy to organize, but I thought I had all that confidence. I want to give the world the message peace and reconciliation, peace and come, things are back to normal. That's why we had 35 countries participate in that international seminar, peace and reconciliation, tourism, peace and reconciliation. It was successful. So we are looking at the East Coast as a developer. But one of the best beaches are there to take from the, from uh, the past Guda, there we have 400, about 600 rooms, already a resort. You go to Trinkamali, little up, you find the, uh, the, Unava, the Kuchi Valley stretch, we have the Nila Valley stretch, there's a beautiful area. You go, come down so, a little further down to Batiklo, Arugambe, Potiville, you find the stretch. So if you take Arugambe, for me, it's a number one location for surfing. Oh, that's number one, not, not south. For surfing, number one location. Then you, we, we promote that, we work on that stretch, East Coast. Then you go to the north. We had the North East, anything that Jaffna Peninsula is something unique. The people, the food, the, the character, the customs, the, the architecture, everything. We are looking at that. It's a different country completely. You can visit now. We have five star hotels, we have hotels there. We are looking at we are looking at the sea the waterfront, we are looking at the seafront, we are looking at various opportunities. So that's something we are looking at. Then you come to the south of um, the north north to the, uh, the north, south to Jaffna. We are on the east, we are taking the south. No. Again, you take the Mana Basin. You take all the islands, we have so many islands. We want to develop those islands and working on those things. So if you take from Mana Basin, taking right up to Jaffna, coming down to Betty Club, that whole stretch, half of the country we drop, that, that is the coastal bend on the north and the east. And we are looking at in, in uh, encouraging hotels, we are encouraging golf courses in those areas, we are encouraging training for people, hotels, well, we need training, we need people. So these people never had an opportunity to learn or to get the, feel a confidence or have a mindset to must work in a hotel. So we are bringing that hotel rooms are taking place, as I said, Pansipur is the number one, the resort in the East Coast, over 600 rooms. It's practically full in those areas and is one of the beautiful beaches and the sea in the area. So we are promoting that. We are not to, we are looking at future to get more people and doing that we have a what you call connectivity. The roads structure is building up to connect cities. The other one we have to connect our internal airports with domestic flights. Because you need a domestic flight. Yes. This country, this government is very keen that we bring a what you call domestic airport, work with the private public partnership. The, the, the government investment is the airport, because that's, you can't build the airport, but that's government investment. The airstrips and the building. The private sector will run that, their own internal domestic place. So we are working very much closely with the private sector, encourage people to come with their internal fly, the domestic flight. Same thing, are looking at the yachts. But the sea, you, if you take this island, every place has a port, harbour, you can go. So you come from Trinko, you come to Jaffna, you come to, to Mana, you come to Gaul, you go to Hambantota. So you go there and you go to, go to the sea interior, you, you look at the country, but you travel by water in the sea. In cruising. Like, cruising. And you stop in have you Have you gained any interest? Uh, yeah, some of the cruise lines already, are here yeah, looking yeah, at it? They're small yachts. Small yachts. Yeah, yachts like coming mm -hmm. on there, they get into Harbour Gaul. Use they stay there, the people go on a tour, interior, they come back and stay in the uh, this sea. Then you go to Hambata, they tour that. You go to uh, to Trikamali, they go into that. You go to Jaffna, you know what I mean? They, so you could see 
there are two things happen there. The, you see the excitement on the sea and see the whales and the dolphins and the rest of the you can do and if they want to identify sea wrecks you can do diving specific and interior you can go and see the, what you want to look at the interior. Uh, the wildlife. Right. You have the wildlife. What, what plans are there to, I mean, I was there, I know uh, unfortunately uh, Yala Park was closed, closed uh, yeah. the last few weeks for but for, the give the, for the drought and give the animals a little rest. Uh, but the, all those safari jeeps, I mean, uh, where, where's the limit? Hmm? <laughs> where, how do you manage that? You know, when the tourists come in even greater numbers and everybody wants to see the elephants no, and the leopards. But we, I'm very keen to see the carrying capacity. Tourism, the yala, the animals are not there to protect the tourists. The tourists are there to protect the animals. It's very important. So based on that, we want to do what we call a carrying capacity. How you control, how you protect the animals, how you protect the fauna and the flora, how you look after those things. That's one reason in the drought we close the parks. But it will protect the animals. It's not the people who just for tourists. Visitors here, yeah, they are here that we can't just say we give give the animals to suffer. So we look at those things, we are looking at rules as more regulation in the future. Because if you want to see the higher density of lepers, you have to come to Sri Lanka, go to Yala. And and, and, and this is a, a part uh, I know the uh, Sean Mann, uh, my friend from World Bank, told me they're working on some uh, tourism planning and things. So, is there a long-term tourism master plan that exists? Yeah, we or have a 2025 uh, policy mm -hmm. master plan for 2025. And, and we are doing a four-year strategic uh, action plan. Our master plan under the Prime Minister's vision, we are looking at a 2025 plan, mm -hmm. a 10-year plan mm -hmm. for future. And that's definitely they will come. I'll give a copy of that vision, what we have done and discuss. Oh, that'll be we great. Take it. I'll give a copy of that. That's what discussion but that is the finally that will put into implementation in the future. But it, it tourism is the thing that they have to grow because if you tourism is for me intraconnected, interconnected. If you take tourism, everything is connected. You take the agriculture, you take the transport, if you take the employment, if you take the garments, if you take the souvenirs, you name it. So the farmer, the fisherman, everything is interconnected with tourism. Absolutely. So it is very important and interconnected with the rest of the, these people. Hmm? So tourism had to be a, a, a industry that we had to look at the overall picture, how you get everything. It's not to get visitors to the country. Now with more tourists provides uh, more opportunities for entrepreneurs who want to get into tourism, you know, whether it be river, boat, safari or whatever. Uh, and uh, are there programs that assist uh, entrepreneurs with uh, investment funds? Yeah, tourism is, I don't, I do agree tourism must, I said earlier, I made a statement, must get benefits, must, it trickle down to the people. Yep. So do that, I'm very keen promoter of home tourism. Home tourism, yeah. So home tourism is something you don't want a lot of money. You have own house, you just do some improvements, live with your style, live to your customary way, you live with it. So that's why I say the people, the visitors who come will experience the homestay, experience the village life. They'll experience, they experience the authenticity of this, what you have in the country. They experience the, the Sri Lankan food. They'll experience the customs and how we will do things. And how, or they will explain how to cook, how we cook our rice or curries with the, the heart, they put it with the wood, the wood fire. And they cook it, they will take a coconut and they will squeeze how you take the coconut meal to cook our curries. But they will do the authentic cinnamon and the spices and how we use and those curry pink, we call curry pink, the curry leaves and get the enhance the taste of our food. People experience. That they will experience. And who, what, and the, Coming to get the benefit. This they are, they spend money, they invest on people, they know, they experience the change. So uh, that's. And the, I see that probably you are also looking at, or already have in place, 
uh, programs that will facilitate uh, expatriates, people who want to have a home in Sri Lanka. Yeah, we do that. But one day you can't own land in this country. Finally, you can get on a lease. Mm -hmm. You can have a long lease on the development of the business. Right. You can do this and you can have it. There's no problem. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are very happy to work. I want people to come and say, okay, that's another promotion. That's the level of the country come up. If I have people from other countries want to come and live here, people who come in Switzerland, people who come in the top part of the Europe and the world, that is, they tell that it's a level of this country, they will live, they're going to live here. Not only Monaco, but not only in those top Mediterranean beaches, places. Huh? So, you, I, more people come. They say, well, I have my whole holiday bungalow in, in, in Gaul. I have my holiday bungalow in, in New Aurelia. Tour guides. Um, there will be need for more tour guides, experienced tour guides. And then uh, what's going on in that space? We have a tour guides program. We train tour guides officially. There's a six months, we have exams. We take them, we teach them, tour guide people. And we have tour guide English speaking. We have tour guide language. We, we at the moment, our highest demand is Chinese speaking tour guide. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at them. We are looking at French speaking, the Spanish. We are looking at the people who do other languages and plus the English. That program is on. We do program. The other day we gave it last two weeks back, we gave 92 certificates for tour guides who went through, passed through this course. All our, all our have a successfully did that. So we are looking at tour guides as a serious concern. Yes. And we are having, but then we need them to be more, monitor them, however, the things they do. Good idea. Because we have to monitor them. I know some issues have come up. And because this, this, because again, it's a touch point. They are the people who have, there's an ambassador, they have to work on this country. They have to talk about not only make only money. They must take the, we must be genuinely, they must try to promote the country. That's what their job mm -hmm. is. So we are looking at seriously how to monitor and them. Be now, and be very knowledgeable about the yeah. country, to share that with the visitor. Mm -hmm. Well, many countries, everybody loves international investment. Yeah? Uh, you need it. There's always this challenge about how, how do you make sure not all the profits and the uh, 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 go offshore, that they that at least a certain amount remain here for the benefits of the local population. No, but in, uh, we have a system. We have a little BOI. If you, if you invest to a BOI, you can repair your profits. We are given seven percent. Give seven percent of tax rebates. The country have sent policies, but more policies will come in the future on the depend on the investment, depend on the employment. But if you employ so many amount of people that it have itself is an asset to the country. If we say I'm a, I'm an investor, I want to have five hundred people, Sri Lanka five hundred people mm -hmm. in my project. That's that's economy. Yeah. yeah. They, I don't mind they they, they, they offshore the money they take, but they already invest on five hundred people employed. 500 people and 2,000 people. Big impact. Yeah. So it's, it's, those are, you must weigh these things. He's not only looking at the benefit, but you must benefit the people what the people are eating. He's not only the government. The hotels, uh, multinational ones, are here and more are planning. How about airlines? Are you, are you airlines knocking your door for, uh, yeah. for increased me, service? For me, if you need tourism, you need a very strong network of airlines. Sri Lanka is 95% big by air. There are no road connection, neither there's a sea connection. Though there are ports, we don't have much of a cruise tourism in this country, we an island. So I believe that we need to have a very good, strong network. Sri Lankan airlines have a national connection, but then we have all the airlines trying to Sri Lanka. We are looking at Sri Lanka as a hub, we are looking at Sri Lanka as an open sky policy, we want to give facilitated. If you take Middle Eastern flights, all those from the Emirates to everybody come to Colombo. And all those airlines go to middle, to east. To, those to Gulf Europe. State Airlines are all, a all blessing for Europe. Colombo. Their all air go, service. All go to Europe. All the airlines go to go Europe. Go to USA. One one connection. USA. Yeah, so they bring it to Colombo. So this connectivity we have. I don't think there's a, we don't have a connectivity. We have a 75 flights a week from Middle East and the cities to Colombo. We have 133 flights coming from India to Colombo. We have all the Asian flights are coming to Colombo, all the Asian airlines from various parts in Asia. So we don't have an issue of airline coming to Sri Lanka. 
But we have issue of how to facilitate, how to get the carrying capital. That's why we are looking at the improve the airport. Mm -hmm. We have to increase our terminals. We have to increase the facility which we are doing now. We started with the Japanese funding, JICA. The new terminal, new airport development will take place. That mm -hmm. will happen. Now you have online visa already, yeah. and then the, the visa fees are not uh, so so expensive. You know, expensive, not high. We got a thirty so days. So that will remain about the same, I guess. Thirty days, you get a, you. What is this visa? You put on online. Yep. In the night you go to sleep. It's connected to you, your computer. Yeah. When I arrived, uh, you have I didn't. Have, number is there, so very easy. You don't have no hassle. So you get a, you, you online you pay. There's a gate payment gate. Yeah, so you pay and yep. you come to see them. That was very easy. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It is clear where your heart is. And it is clear that your 40-year career in the travel tourism industry is uh, perfect for this position. Thank you. Thank you very much.